Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are talking about rich people decor and furniture that needs to go. I've done this a few times on my channel and you guys can't get enough of these videos and I can't either because they're so much fun because we love sitting there and talking about how out of touch rich people are and how they have so much money but they still have really bad taste and that's fun for us to make fun of here on the internet. Let's get going. Okay, but before I get to those rich people decor items that need to go, let me thank today's sponsor which is Made In. Okay, some of you know because I mention on my channel all the time, I watch a lot of cooking content here on YouTube and those creators always use Made In so I always knew it was going to be good which is why I was so excited when they decided to sponsor this video. Made In designs professional quality cooking for the home cook and with a hundred thousand five-star reviews you can trust them to deliver on amazing quality pieces I can vouch for that as well I've been loving the 10 inch and 12 inch five ply stainless steel frying pans because of their versatility in the kitchen I can easily switch between cooking tasks you can go from browning to crisping to searing to frying and even putting this pans straight from the stove top or right into the oven I'll also mention that the knife set in olive wood has seriously upped my prep game maidens knives make me feel like I'm one of those cooking channel youtubers that I love so much and so if it's good enough for Brian Lagerstrom and it's good enough for me and probably good enough for you. If you're ready to upgrade your kitchen, check out the stainless collection and more Made In cookware by using the link in my description and save on your order. And thank you Made In for sponsoring this video. Okay, first up on my list, rich people things that are need to go that just bother me. That's it. They just bother me. And that is going to be like multiple shower heads and giant like rain shower heads. What is with people's showers getting absolutely crazy out of control lately? I get it. I'm a shower person, not a bath person. I understand. And I guess people want to like do a lot of really crazy things with their bathrooms, which I think is a wonderful thing. We've seen crazy fireplaces in Lily Allen's bathroom, which we'll get to in a second. We've seen all sorts of stuff happening in the bathroom. The shower is just getting a little bit out of control. Like what are, what are you all getting up to in these showers that you need like seven shower heads and body washers and all sorts of different things happening there in the shower. You can't all be OF creators, you know what I mean? I mean, if you are, in which case, go for it. I mean, that's just, that's content. That's a business expense. Like you let your accountant know that those are a business expense there. You can put in as many faucets and showers as you want in there. That makes sense. But you can't all be OF creators, you know what I mean? Like, uh, could you believe, by the way, like people are making like 20 or like 40 grand a month or something like that on, on these apps. I mean, good for them. I gotta say, good for them. But they can all be making content there, you know what I mean? Like, where are these rich people? What are they doing in all these showers? Why do they need all these different shower heads? I don't know. I think we've overall seen this trend of the bathroom being more like a spa-like atmosphere, which I'm all about. But there is a point when you're just sort of getting like blasted, like you're an elephant at the zoo, where it just like stops being fun anymore. And I just don't think you need this many things happening in the shower. I'm personally just, you know what? If you've got a couple of jets in there and maybe a nice little wand, then that's and a, and a rain shower. Like, you're done, you're done, you're done. You don't need this many things that are happening there in the shower. But rich people, you know what, why not? If you got the budget, I guess you just, why not just throw in more? Why not put in more showers? Why not just keep going, I guess? It's kind of like the multiple kitchen islands we've talked about in the past. Let's just throw in seven shower heads and you're good to go. It'll be a fun party. You can invite all the neighbors in, it'll be a good time. Okay, next up on my list is gonna be, um, we're gonna talk about furniture that looks like food. And not just things that vaguely look like food, like the Bellini sofa looks like a pack of hot dog buns. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about they actually look like food. This is the postmodern 90s back again and everything is like reverent and cool and interesting and weird and why not just have some fun and bring things that look like food. But some of these things are out of control and some of the prices are out of control. So let's talk about the little like corn on the cob side table that I've seen all over the place. I think Emma Chamberlain has one of these or maybe several of these. I don't know, but these are not even like vaguely like they look like corn in the cob but they are actual just like corn in the cob. I don't know for me I'm always blown away at how expensive some of this stuff is because like it feels a little Urban Outfitters to me. I'm pretty sure Urban Outfitters probably sells one for like $89 and then it's probably white labeled. You can probably buy it at Walmart for $39. You know what I mean? Like but some of these pieces are expensive like this ridiculous hot dog couch. Like <laughs> Why am I talking about a hot dog sofa? Why? Is this where we are? Is this where we are as a species? Anyway, hot dog sofa complete with cucumber? No, it's a pickle. That's a pickle. I was like, wait, what are we putting on this hot dog here? No, what is a, why is there a tomato on a, why is there a tomato on a hot dog? That's not, anyway, is it supposed to be ketchup? You get what I'm saying here. These are the pillows. We've got some tomatoes. We've got what looks to be a cucumber, maybe a pickle if you feel like it all here on a hot dog sofa. But the point was the price. That's where I was going with this. I was too distracted by the tomato thinking who puts tomato on a hot dog. $8,206 is, um, 
a fair price for a hot dog sofa, I guess. Listen, if I made a hot dog sofa that was so ridiculously stupid, I think this started out as a joke. This must have started out as a joke and then someone sold it to a rich friend or some stupid rich person bought it and then that became a trend and then someone was like, oh, I guess I make hot dog sofas now for a living and for $8,200, I get it. I would go with it too. I would open up that LLC, that corp tomorrow and I'd be whipping out sofas for all these stupid rich people <laughs> that are buying this stuff. It comes in many varieties, you'll be pleased to hear. It also, I believe, comes in a side chair and all sorts of hot dog options for you to partake in. But these things are just overall quite stupid. I've seen many of them. And again, they're just, it's this postmodern trend that we've seen in interior design now for several years. People try to do something really interesting because they're tired of boring minimalism and boring Scandi, which I get, but there's also tons of other styles that are out there that are really, really cool. None of which involving hot dog sofas. So I really wish people would have fun with design and get creative with some Art Nouveau spaces and Art Echo spaces and even the Hollywood, like, you know, I don't love RuPaul's house tour that's on AD necessarily. I love that it's RuPaul because I think like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I expected RuPaul to live, to be honest with you. If he lived in some serene scanty space, I'd be like, okay, well then who is the RuPaul we've known all these years? You know what I mean? I would just be confused. But the space makes sense for RuPaul because it's an interesting style. It's like a Hollywood Regency sort of really cool, cool space. Again, not for me, not my taste, but I can respect it. But but like have fun with different styles. You know, like there's so many different things you can do with your home. You can combine styles in interesting spaces, but again, none of which involving corn on the cob. So I don't love this trend for rich people. They have unlimited budgets. I would love to see them do more adventurous, creative, interesting, fabulous things. I think we need to move past the food items. Yeah, I think we do. Okay, next one on my list is gonna be like a gift wrapping room gift wrapping room. I think they're running out of things to do with rooms, right? These houses are so ginormous. They're so gigantic that they just, like no one gives that many gifts. I mean, maybe you do. In which case, can I be your friend? Cause you can give me some gifts if you want. Like if this is what, if this is, if you need to use the gift wrapping room, I'm available. My PO box is in my about here, right here on the YouTube. Go to about PO box, send me whatever you want. But this just feels like the height of look how many rooms I have because it's like you have 74 rooms for you and your like two kids. Each kid has a room, obviously. Then we have one room and then, oh, I don't know what to do with the rest of the rooms. Ooh, do we put it in an office? I mean, I guess so. Okay, cool. Anything else? Well, the nanny obviously needs a room. Okay, what do we do with the other 88 rooms? So you know what I mean? Like people don't know what to do. So they just go in and they just go, I know a gift wrapping room because I, I, I like to give gifts sometimes because I'm rich and that's what we love to do is just give gifts to other rich people, I assume. So I just really don't like this because of the elitism that I think is just obviously baked into it because the rest of us are like, oh, I'm in a studio apartment or like maybe a one bedroom. And we're like, oh, I'd really love to get a three bedroom so that maybe we could have a kid one day. Like, I think that's like what a lot of people are at right now. And meanwhile, it's like gift wrapping room. Like you have really an extra room that you can just devote to gift wrapping. Oh, it's peak capitalism. This is where we're at. You know, I just feel like give those rooms to somebody else. I don't know, take it some homeless people. <laughs> do something with the room that's not gift wrapping. Again, obviously everyone's like, but you can do what you want, it's your money. Of course you can, go do what you want, but I can also say what I want, so here we are. Okay, next on my list is gonna be giant fireplaces. So we talked about the Gwyneth Paltrow fireplace in every room in a previous video. So if you wanna see that, I'm gonna to link to a whole playlist of this that I got going on here at the end of this video. Am I jealous? Yes. That's why I said in that, in that video and I stand by it. I'm jealous of all these fireplaces. I don't have one. I don't have one fireplace. I'd love one. Do you think I have multiple fireplaces where I'm starting to put them in bathrooms? What's next? We're putting them in closets? Is this a rat now? Maybe in your gift wrapping room so that, well, you can sit by the fire as you wrap your Christmas gifts? I mean, I don't know. But let's just take a minute and talk about the size of these fireplaces. And I'm like particularly talking about Aaron Paul's giant fireplace he needed for his 80 house tour. That fireplace is so ginormous. It just, the size of these fireplaces only reflects the scale of the home. So your living room is probably too big. If your fireplace, like, you know, you could take entire two by fours and throw it in there in order to be able to light a fire. Like that's, it's not a, great sign in terms of how large it is. Because again, everything is so big. The room is big because the house is big, because the fireplace is big. And it's not until you actually stand next to it and look completely ridiculous because these d houses are not designed for like actual humans to live in, like normal sized people. So these fireplaces just look, I think, completely ridiculous in these spaces because they're not really built for the human scale. So that is my main problem with them is just that they're so 
grotesquely huge. And I just think they look silly. I think they just look quite silly and quite stupid. Listen, I love a large great room, love a big spacious kitchen. If you've got it, you know, go for it. But there is a point where it starts to be a little bit ridiculous and look a little bit like a gymnasium. And that's really what I have a problem with these giant, giant spaces, complete with these giant, giant fireplaces. Am I jealous? Absolutely. So I'll save you the comment. Okay, I see you're already down there. Like, you're just jealous. You don't have their money. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yep. I probably wouldn't have a giant fireplace or a gift wrapping station because I'm probably too selfish to actually be able to like give a bunch of gifts to people. I don't, I don't like wrapping. I'd have, if I was that rich, I'd pay somebody to use my gift wrapping station because I hate wrapping gifts so much. But you know, I probably wouldn't do those things. I would have the fireplace in the bathroom though because that is just funny, fun. But you're right, I am jealous, I admit it. Okay, and then next up on my list is gonna be crazy expensive appliances in people's kitchens. Now, I understand that if you're extremely rich, you're probably not hauling it down to the old Best Buy and throwing in the Samsung fridge to be able to go into your I don't know, $45 million mansion. I get it, that's probably not for you. But I am going to say that it's like kind of crazy obvious that you're probably like not gonna use this extremely expensive appliances or the sheer amount of appliances that are in these kitchens. I get it, you have a large kitchen because you have a large home. We talked about that, right? But oftentimes I think what happens is, is they're just extremely expensive and there are so many different appliances that we all know that a lot of these rich people just are not using. So if I have to see the Le Cornu oven one more time, I get it, maybe Sofia Vergara, maybe she loves that, maybe she's cooking up a storm and I just don't know, I'm not gonna necessarily doubt her. I am going to say there's a possibility that maybe a lot of these rich people hire cooks to actually do a lot of their cooking. Now I get it, again, you're not gonna use the Samsung fridge, you're not gonna throw that in there, the Samsung oven or whatever. You're probably not like, like everybody else, I get it. But these appliances, these appliance packages run into hundreds of thousands of dollars to outfit some of these kitchens. And if you love to cook and you can afford it, fabulous, then put it in. I don't doubt that some people, like rich people absolutely do cook, but there are so many of these different house tours that I see and you can see these appliances have absolutely barely been used. And I guess I just think that uh, this, you know, falls a little bit under jealousy for me because I would love to cook with these amazing appliances because I do love to cook myself. But yeah, the ranges are ginormous. The fridges are massively huge. There's oftentimes multiple fridges going on, right? Remember that Jeffree Star house tour or whatever, where you had like a lineup of like seven fridges or something, all full of probably like, I don't know, Fiji water? Like, stop the planet I want to get off. You know what I mean? Like there's so many of these crazy appliance packages and they run into the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars because even if you're going to put in like a decent appliance package, it's going to cost you tens of thousands. It's going to cost you 40, 50 grand. So the idea that these people are putting in ovens that are worth at least that is just absolutely crazy astronomical to me, especially when they're not under like heavy use. This is oftentimes like commercial grade equipment. This is designed to like work at your local freaking restaurant. This is not necessarily designed designed for a person who cooks three times a year. So yes, this stems from jealousy, but it is what it is, here we are. And I'm just really tired of seeing these people fawn over their crazy appliances that they're never gonna use. Like, give them to me, I'll use them. And I, even, I don't even appreciate some of these appliances because they're just so industrial that a normal person would never cook this way. I'm jealous, but I'm also tired of looking at it, so please stop. Okay, that's it for me for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I love these videos because I just love finding the crazy things that rich people do. And we just love that, don't we? Like we all love to watch it and make fun of them because I don't know, it's all bread and circuses at this point. So let's just continue to have fun. I'll probably do another version of this at some point in the future, but I'm gonna link here to the playlist of a bunch of these other videos that I've done. So click here to go watch them and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, bye.